One of the first things to code when learning a new programming language always seems to be the to-do list, for good reason. And I wanted to jump on this bandwagon, but to jump in style. So I've decided to add my own geeky little twist to it and code a to-do board instead. <laughs> I've not gone all out for it because it's only the second video in the series. I'd like to do more. And like any good, healthy, serious relationship, it's good to take it slow at the beginning. So let's see if we can build this to-do board in under 20 minutes again, or even 10. I'm pretty sure we can. Step one, set up your React projects. As always, npx create React app, give it a name, wait for React to do its thing, test that it works, remove everything you don't need, Let's go. Step two, thinking in React. Thinking in React is a concept to help people get to grips with using React. It's basically how to plan for your application. First off, we need to know what our components will be. I usually think of the .js files as web pages and the .jsx files as the components to go into the web pages. A lot of people use .js for everything. That works too. In this little to-do app, we have the app.js file, which will be our page displaying everything. We then have the input component and the board component. Since I'll be using .jsx files, let's go ahead and install Tailwind and add it into our Tailwind config file. We'll create a component folder and start with the input component. Step three, input component. Another quirk I started doing to further compartmentalize pages and components is to use traditional functions for the JS files and arrow functions for the JSX files. Just a personal preference. To see it on the web page, we need to add the input component into our app.js file like this. Make sure that the uppercase and lowercase matches up to the name of the file that you're importing. That's always helpful. There we go. Now we can see that it works correctly. In the input component, let's have a form that holds the input and an add button. I've not attached a label to the input because I think for a simple project like this, the input box and the placeholder text makes it abundantly clear that this is an input box and it looks less cluttered this way. We'll want to store the data the user types. So having done the stopwatch app, we know we'll need to import use state from React. React calls this process identifying where state lives, which sounds way too formal and more complicated than it needs to be. It's just whenever you need to remember some data, use state is your friend. Value will be the input, and on change, we want to set the input to whatever the user types. Let's add some basic styling. Console log it to see what it's doing. Great, it's working exactly as expected. Now the button. Because the button is inside a form tag, I always just add the e.prevent default on autopilot. And on click, we want the machine to remember what the user typed and display everything for as long as the user is not refreshing the page because we're not using local storage yet. Since we'll be displaying all this data in our board.jsx file to come, we actually want to store this list of to-do tasks in the parent file, so the data is visible and accessible for everyone. In our app.js file, we'll have a task list state and update it with set task list. The task list state will be an array, 
So within our use state brackets, we just need to symbolize the array with square brackets. We pass the task list and set task list into our input like this. And in our handle add task function, we can just update the task list directly with the help of the JavaScript spread operator. The spread operator is a shortcut to copying through the existing task list. We can add the new input value to the task list array, just like this, and that's it. If we go back to the app.js and console log the task list to verify, we can see that it's all stored in an array as it should. To display it, we can just map through the array directly here. And voila, we have a bullet point list. The unordered list is not the format that we want, but it's just reassuring to see that the data is coming through correctly. And we can then manipulate it later. Let's add a little bit of styling to get the page looking a little bit more comfortable. Great. Step four, board component. We want to store it almost like a notice board format. So let's add the board component in our folder. Set up the files so that the board.jsx file is connected with our app.js file. In React, we can only return one element. If we want to return multiple elements without having a container element, we can use React fragments or these empty tags. Our board will replace the unordered list, so let's pass each task that we've mapped into our board so that we can display it the way we want within our board component. React also needs a key for the child component. The key will have to be unique for each element we're mapping. Luckily, we can just use the index as the key. Let's style the board into a grid format. Without local storage, every time you refresh, you start again. Cool.
Now, every to-do list should have a delete option. Otherwise, it's just not a very satisfying to-do list. So let's add a delete button and do some simple styling. On click, we want to handle delete. To delete the correct task, we need to know the index of the task. So we pass the index through like this. Although the key also uses the index, we can't actually use the key in our child component functions. So we can just pass through the index as a separate variable. And to update the task list, we'll need to pass through the task list and the set task list. In our handle delete function, we can find out the index number of the task that we want to remove via the index off method. We can then splice it from our existing task list. And to show what's left after the splice, we can use the filter method within the set task list like this. These are all just pure JavaScript methods. W3Schools link below. I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary here. And the task we want to delete gets deleted. Woohoo! Almost too easy. If anyone has an even cleaner way of doing the handle delete function, please let me know. I'm always looking out for more efficient ways of doing something. And I have a feeling there might be an even simpler way of deleting a task. Anyway, that's it. A basic to-do board in four simple steps. You can add a whole bunch of things to it. For example, editing a task, striking through the task name once it's done. You can add a description. The list just goes on and on and on. And now you have a board to track that list. <laughs>